For centuries, the story of Lucifer has captured the human imagination, sparking countless tales of rebellion and redemption. But beyond the familiar verses, there lies an untold narrative, obscured by the passage of time and layers of interpretation. Join us as we peel back the layers, exploring forgotten scriptures, hidden myths, and cultural echoes that have shaped the enigmatic figure we know as Lucifer. Prepare to shatter preconceptions and challenge your understanding. The journey begins now, into the untold realms of Lucifer's narrative. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let the journey unfold. Welcome to The Untold Story of Lucifer. Chapter 1. Rebellion in Heaven the concept of rebellion in heaven is a captivating theme that transcends religious, mythological, and literary traditions. Rooted in the collective human imagination, this narrative revolves around celestial beings challenging divine authority, sparking a cosmic conflict with profound implications. While the specifics of this rebellion vary across different cultural and religious contexts, its essence resonates universally, exploring themes of pride, free will, and the consequences of defying the divine. The origins of the rebellion in heaven are often traced to biblical texts, specifically Isaiah 14, 12, 15, and Ezekiel 28, 12, 19. In Isaiah, a passage addressing the king of Babylon speaks of the fallen morning star, commonly associated with Lucifer. The language used in these verses depicts a proud being who aspired to exalt his throne above the stars of God but was cast down to Sheol, the realm of the dead, for his rebellion. The Ezekiel passage, while primarily addressing the king of Tyre, employs symbolic language that has been interpreted to describe the fall of a powerful being from grace. This being, often identified with Lucifer, was originally adorned with wisdom and beauty but was cast out of the mountain of God due to his corruption. The New Testament, particularly the book of Revelation, builds upon these Old Testament passages to depict Satan's rebellion against God. Revelation 12, 7-9 narrates a celestial war in heaven, with Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, Satan, and his angels. The dragon is ultimately cast out of heaven, and his angels are hurled to the earth. This cosmic conflict is an integral part of Christian eschatology, setting the stage for the final judgment. Revelation 20.10 foretells the ultimate fate of the rebellious figures as they are cast into the lake of fire, marking the culmination of the divine retribution. The concept of rebellion in heaven raises profound theological questions, particularly concerning the nature of free will and the existence of evil. If celestial beings, endowed with free will, could rebel against the divine, what implications does this have for the human experience? Theologians grapple with the tension between God's sovereignty and the existence of evil, exploring the complexities of a universe where rebellion can arise even in the heavenly realms. A common thread in many interpretations is the emphasis on Lucifer's pride as the catalyst for rebellion. Lucifer, often portrayed as an angelic being of great beauty and intelligence, succumbs to the temptation of elevating himself above God. This narrative element reflects a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked pride and the corruption of that which is inherently good. John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, stands as a literary masterpiece that delves into the rebellion in heaven with unparalleled depth. Published in the 17th century, Milton's work provides a nuanced exploration of the cosmic conflict human nature and the consequences of disobedience. Milton's portrayal of Satan as a complex and charismatic figure adds layers of depth to the narrative. Satan becomes a tragic hero, embodying qualities that evoke both sympathy and condemnation. His defiance of God is driven by a desire for autonomy and a refusal to serve in what he perceives as an inferior position. One of the pivotal scenes in Paradise Lost is the council held in hell, where Satan convinces his fellow fallen angels to embrace rebellion. The eloquence of Satan's rhetoric and the internal debates among the fallen angels contribute to the richness of the narrative. Milton explores themes of political intrigue, charismatic leadership, and the seductive power of rebellion. The consequences of the rebellion in heaven extend to humanity in Milton's narrative. Satan's temptation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden echoes his defiance in heaven, 
illustrating the ripple effect of celestial rebellion on the earthly realm. The fall of humanity becomes intricately linked to the cosmic struggle, emphasizing the interconnectedness of the spiritual and material worlds. The story of rebellion in heaven has left an indelible mark on artistic expression throughout history. From classical paintings depicting the expulsion of Lucifer from heaven to modern cinematic portrayals of celestial battles, artists and creators continue to draw inspiration from this timeless narrative. The visual representation of the cosmic conflict serves as a powerful symbol of the eternal struggle between good and evil. Beyond its religious and mythological roots, the theme of rebellion in heaven has found allegorical significance in various cultural contexts. It serves as a metaphor for human struggles against oppressive systems, authoritarianism, and the quest for individual autonomy. The archetype of the rebel against divine or cosmic authority resonates with audiences across diverse backgrounds, reflecting a shared fascination with themes of defiance and redemption. The story of rebellion in heaven unfolds as an eternal drama capturing the human imagination across centuries and civilizations. Whether rooted in religious texts, explored in literary masterpieces, or depicted in visual arts, the cosmic conflict remains a profound exploration of existential questions. It challenges us to contemplate the nature of free will, the consequences of pride, and the intricate dance between divine sovereignty and human agency. As we navigate our own earthly struggles, the rebellion in heaven serves as a timeless reminder of the enduring quest for meaning and the perennial search for redemption in the face of cosmic challenges. Chapter 2. Fall from Grace In the beginning, there existed a paradise untouched by the shadows of sin, Eden, a realm where the sun bathed the earth in golden hues and the air whispered the secrets of creation a garden of unparalleled beauty, guarded by ancient trees that reached towards the heavens. Amidst this splendor, two figures walked hand in hand, Adam and Eve, the first of humankind, blissfully unaware of the encroaching darkness that would shatter their idyllic existence. The garden was alive with vibrant colors and the symphony of nature. Adam and Eve reveled in their innocence, their laughter echoing through the orchards. Yet in the quiet corners of Eden, a subtle hiss emerged, a serpent coiled around the branches of the Tree of Knowledge. Its eyes gleamed with cunning as it observed the unsuspecting couple. One day, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the garden bathed in twilight, the serpent uncoiled itself and approached Eve. With a voice that slithered through the air like silk, it whispered forbidden truths. The serpent spoke of a fruit, a fruit that held the knowledge of good and evil, a knowledge that could elevate them beyond the simplicity of paradise. Intrigued, Eve listened, the serpent's words curling around her like tendrils of curiosity. The forbidden fruit hung tantalizingly close, its iridescent glow beckoning her towards a destiny intertwined with the threads of both bliss and sorrow. As dawn painted the sky in hues of pink and gold, the whispers of the serpent echoed in Eve's mind. She found herself standing before the tree of knowledge, the forbidden fruit dangling like a forbidden jewel. A moment of hesitation lingered in the air, but curiosity triumphed over restraint. Eve plucked the fruit, and a shiver ran through the fabric of creation. The garden, once a haven of perfection, bore witness to the first act of disobedience. As the juices of the forbidden fruit touched her lips, a profound awareness unfolded. Knowledge surged through her, bringing both enlightenment and a heavy burden. Adam, sensing a change in the very essence of Eden, approached Eve. Her eyes, now open to a world beyond innocence, met his. The realization dawned upon them. The harmony they once shared with the garden was fractured. The shadows of self-awareness darkened their paradise. With the taste of forbidden knowledge still lingering, Adam and Eve felt the weight of their choices pressing upon them. Shame cloaked them like a tattered garment as they sought refuge in the shadows of Eden's ancient trees. The once welcoming breeze now carried whispers of discord. God, the omniscient creator, descended to Eden, his voice reverberating through the garden. The divine presence, once a source of solace, now bore the weight of judgment. The consequences of their disobedience unfolded, an expulsion from paradise, 
a life marked by toil and pain and mortality. Eden, bathed in sorrow, witnessed the departure of its first inhabitants. The gates closed behind Adam and Eve, sealing them in a world forever changed by the choices they made. As Adam and Eve stepped into the unknown, the shadows of their fall cast ripples across the tapestry of time. Generations unfolded, each echoing the consequences of that fateful day. The human journey, marked by triumphs and tribulations, bore the indelible imprint of the fall from grace. Civilizations rose and fell, empires crumbled, and the echoes of Eden's radiance faded into myth. Yet within the human heart, the yearning for lost paradise persisted, a longing for a return to innocence, an unbroken communion with the divine. Amidst the shadows, whispers of redemption stirred. Prophets arose, carrying messages of hope and renewal. The narrative of the fall became a prelude to a story of salvation, a promise of a savior who would bridge the gap between divinity and humanity. In the quiet corners of history, a divine plan unfolded. The shadows that once seemed insurmountable became the backdrop against which the light of redemption shone brightest. The echoes of Eden found resonance in the promise of a new paradise, where the fallen would rise and the broken would be made whole. The story of the fall from grace, woven into the fabric of human existence, endures as a timeless tale of choices and consequences. In the hearts of each generation, the echoes of Eden persist, a whisper that transcends the boundaries of time and space. As humanity navigates the currents of joy and sorrow, the quest for redemption becomes a guiding star. The shadows may linger, but so does the promise of a dawn where paradise is restored and the journey comes full circle. In the ebb and flow of life, where choices carve the contours of destiny, the story of the fall remains a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a spirit that, against all odds, continues to reach for the light beyond the shadows. Chapter 3 Temptation of Adam and Eve In the heart of the paradisiacal Garden of Eden, where the flora bloomed in kaleidoscopic brilliance and the air hummed with divine harmony, a subtle disturbance unfurled. It was a disturbance of whispers, whispers that slithered through the verdant foliage, carrying with them the allure of forbidden knowledge. The serenity of Eden teetered on the edge as Adam and Eve, the first inhabitants of this celestial haven, stood at the threshold of a choice that would echo through the corridors of time. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across Eden. Amidst the twilight, a serpent, its scales shimmering with an otherworldly luster, approached Eve. With eyes that gleamed with ancient wisdom and a voice that wove enchantment, the serpent began to speak. It spoke of a tree in the heart of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Its fruits, the serpent whispered, held the key to understanding the very fabric of existence. Eve, entranced by the serpent's words, found herself drawn closer to the forbidden tree. The serpent's forked tongue painted images of enlightenment, of a reality beyond the blissful simplicity of Eden. A curiosity kindled in Eve's eyes as the forbidden tree loomed before her. The forbidden fruit hung like a jeweled temptation, radiating an ethereal glow in the moonlight. Eve, torn between the sacred commandment and the serpent's beguiling promises, extended her hand. The serpent's eyes gleamed with triumph as Eve plucked the fruit from the tree's branches. As the juice of the forbidden fruit touched Eve's lips, a tremor reverberated through the garden. The air crackled with an energy that signaled the irrevocable shift, the crossing of a threshold that would forever alter the destiny of humankind. With the taste of forbidden knowledge, a veil lifted from Eve's eyes. She saw the world in new hues, complexities, nuances, and the duality of existence unfolded before her. A profound awareness settled within her, and the echo of the serpent's words resonated in her mind. Eve sought Adam, her partner in both bliss and disobedience. The taste of the forbidden fruit lingered on her lips as she shared it with him. In that moment, the primal connection between Adam and Eve underwent a transformation. 
the knowledge they gained was both a gift and a curse. A gift that opened their eyes to the vast spectrum of existence and a curse that severed them from the innocence they once knew. As the first light of dawn bathed Eden, God, the omniscient creator, descended. The once harmonious garden now pulsated with a discordant energy. The divine presence once a source of comfort, now bore the weight of judgment. God questioned Adam and Evie, their nakedness now a symbol of vulnerability and shame. The consequences unfurled, the expulsion from Eden, the toil and pain that would accompany their earthly existence, and the inexorable march towards mortality. The garden gates closed behind them, sealing the paradise they once called home. As Adam and Eve ventured into the unknown, the shadows of their disobedience cast ripples across the canvas of history. Generations unfolded, each carrying the imprints of the first act of rebellion. The human journey became a testament to the choices made in Eden, echoing both the beauty and the brokenness of the fallen world. Civilizations rose and fell, empires crumbled and the memory of Eden transformed into myth. Yet, within the collective human soul, the yearning for lost paradise persisted, a yearning that echoed through the corridors of time. The story of Adam and Eve's temptation became a universal archetype, a narrative that transcended religious boundaries and cultural divides. The allure of forbidden knowledge, the consequences of disobedience, and the transformative power of choice resonated in diverse traditions. In Greek mythology, the tale found echoes in the myth of Pandora, whose curiosity led to the release of suffering into the world. In Hindu mythology, the story of Sita's temptation and abduction by the demon king Ravana explored similar themes of choice and consequence. The temptation of Adam and Eve, while rooted in ancient texts, continues to hold relevance in the modern human experience. It serves as a cautionary tale, prompting reflection on the nature of choice, the pursuit of knowledge, and the delicate balance between free will and divine command. In literature, from John Milton's Paradise Lost to contemporary works exploring themes of morality and consequence, the narrative of temptation persists as a source of inspiration and contemplation. Beyond the external journey, the temptation of Adam and Eve unfolds within the intricate landscapes of the human soul. It is a narrative that invites introspection an exploration of the choices we face, the temptations that beckon, and the consequences that shape the contours of our inner worlds. In the quiet moments of self-reflection, each person encounters their own metaphorical serpent, whispering the allure of forbidden fruits. The echoes of Eden resonate within the chambers of the heart, challenging us to grapple with the complexities of desire, morality, and the pursuit of wisdom. As the pages of Eden's tale turn, the legacy of Adam and Eve's temptation endures. It is a story that transcends time, a narrative of choice, consequence, and the indomitable human spirit. Beyond the gates of Eden, where the shadows of disobedience linger, the journey unfolds. In the labyrinth of existence, where choices carve destiny, the echo of the serpent's whisper reverberates, a reminder that, in every moment, the allure of temptation and the power of choice shape the narrative of humanity. This extended exploration aims to immerse readers even further into the complexities of the temptation of Adam and Eve, weaving a tapestry that spans from the celestial gardens of Eden to the inner landscapes of the human soul. Chapter 4 of the Story of Lucifer Punishment and Damnation in the celestial realms, where the divine order resonated as a symphony of cosmic harmony, a discordant note echoed through the celestial corridors. Lucifer, the morning star, once bathed in the radiant glow of divine favor, had become the harbinger of rebellion. The celestial symphony was disrupted, and the cosmic drama of Lucifer's defiance against the celestial order began. The rebellion that Lucifer ignited escalated into a celestial war of unimaginable proportions. Angelic legions clashed amidst the astral tapestry, the celestial bodies themselves quivering in response to the cosmic turmoil. Lucifer, a charismatic and once revered archangel, led his followers against the legions of the divine, 
with the Archangel Michael standing as the stalwart defender of celestial order. Celestial energies collided, creating celestial tempests that painted the heavens with ethereal hues. The struggle between obedience and defiance, order and chaos, reverberated through the cosmic expanse, marking a celestial war that transcended the confines of time and space. As the celestial war reached its apogee, Michael's divine blade clashed with Lucifer's ethereal sword. The heavens quaked as the morning star fell, his wings scorched by the celestial fury. Lucifer, once the radiant paragon of celestial beauty, found himself cast out from the luminous realms into the cosmic abyss below. The descent was not only physical, but a profound spiritual plummet. Lucifer, now stripped of his celestial radiance, descended through the celestial spheres, leaving behind the realms of divine grace for the shadows that awaited him. The fallen angels, now stripped of their celestial glory, found themselves in a realm of desolation, a vast, starless expanse that mirrored the internal desolation within Lucifer. The once resplendent beings, now transformed into grotesque shadows of their former selves, roamed the desolate landscapes of their new reality. The echoes of their rebellion lingered in the air, a haunting reminder of the cosmic defiance that had led to their damnation. The desolation mirrored the internal turmoil within Lucifer, whose pride had led him and his followers to this abyssal fate. The descent of Lucifer and his legions reached its nadir, a realm of eternal torment known as the Lake of Fire. A sea of molten flames and brimstone awaited the fallen, a symbolic and literal representation of the divine wrath that befell those who dared defy the celestial order. As Lucifer and his followers plunged into the scalding depths of the Lake of Fire, their celestial forms contorted in agony. The flames consumed them, reducing once majestic angels to tormented entities writhing in the infernal embrace. The Lake of Fire became a manifestation of divine justice, an eternal sentence for the rebellion that had shattered the celestial harmony. Amidst the fiery depths of the inferno, Lucifer ascended to a throne of darkness. His once radiant countenance now bore the scars of the celestial war, and his wings, once symbols of divine grace, were tattered remnants. The fallen morning star became the ruler of hell, a realm born from the shadows of rebellion. From his infernal throne, Lucifer surveyed the desolation of the damned. His dominion over hell became a twisted mockery of the celestial realms he had once called home. The fallen angels, now demons, served as both subjects and prisoners in this infernal kingdom. As the story of Lucifer's punishment and damnation unfolded, it resonated beyond the celestial realms. The cosmic echo of the fallen morning star's rebellion permeated religious texts, mythologies, and literary traditions. The archetype of the rebellious angel, cast into the abyss, became a symbol of the consequences of pride and defiance. In religious narratives, Lucifer's fall from grace served as a cautionary tale, a warning against the arrogance that could lead even celestial beings to damnation. In literature, from Dante's Inferno to modern works exploring themes of redemption and rebellion, the cosmic echo of Lucifer's descent continued to reverberate. Amidst the infernal depths of hell, Lucifer's thirst for defiance endured. From the shadows of damnation, he extended his influence to the mortal realm. The tale of Lucifer's temptation on earth unfolded as he sought to entice humanity into the same rebellion that had led to his damnation. In religious texts, Lucifer's role as a tempter became synonymous with the lure of sin and the eternal struggle between good and evil. In literature and art, the depiction of Lucifer as a seductive figure further amplified the narrative of temptation resonating with audiences as a timeless archetype of the fallen tempter. As the cosmic drama of Lucifer's punishment and damnation played out across celestial realms and mortal landscapes, it wove itself into the very fabric of the human condition. The archetypal struggle between obedience and defiance, the consequences of pride and the pursuit of redemption became integral to the human narrative. In the hearts of individuals, the echoes of Lucifer's rebellion manifested as the internal conflicts of pride and humility, defiance, and submission. The cosmic drama, while rooted in celestial realms, found resonance within the complexities of human existence, an exploration of the choices that define our destinies and the eternal quest for redemption. 
The infernal landscapes of hell, ruled by Lucifer, expanded into a labyrinth of torment and despair. The layers of damnation unfolded like an intricate tapestry, each level representing a specific sin and its corresponding punishment. Dante's circles of hell, from the vestibule of the indecisive to the frozen lake of treachery, provided a literary exploration of the depths to which Lucifer's rebellion had led. In these infernal depths, the damned souls, once angels who had defied the divine order, endured punishments that reflected the nature of their transgressions. The exploration of hell's circles became a metaphorical journey into the consequences of cosmic rebellion, a descent into the intricate web of damnation woven by Lucifer's defiance. As Lucifer ruled over the infernal dominion, his reflection on the choices that had led to his damnation became a recurring theme. The once proud morning star grappled with the weight of his rebellion, the consequences that befell him and his legions, and the eternal question of whether the pursuit of defiance had been worth the price. In moments of solitude on his infernal throne, Lucifer's introspection revealed layers of regret, bitterness, and a defiant resolve that persisted even in the face of eternal damnation. His character, once a paragon of celestial beauty, became a complex and tragic figure, a fallen angel whose choices had reshaped the cosmic narrative. As the cosmic curtain descended on the tale of Lucifer's punishment and damnation, the echoes endured. The fallen morning star, now the ruler of hell, stood as a testament to the consequences of cosmic rebellion the lake of fire, the infernal throne, and the desolation of the fallen became eternal symbols etched into the annals of celestial lore. Yet, beyond the infernal depths, the narrative carried a glimmer of possibility. The cosmic drama of Lucifer's rebellion served not only as a warning, but as a reflection of the eternal struggle within the human spirit. The quest for redemption, the internal battle against pride, and the enduring hope for divine grace continued to shape the celestial realms and the human condition alike. In the vast tapestry of existence, where celestial realms and mortal landscapes converged, the tale of Lucifer's punishment and damnation became a cosmic thread, a thread woven into the very fabric of creation, echoing through the ages as a reminder of the consequences that accompany the defiance of celestial order. As the cosmic drama continued, the eternal struggle between obedience and defiance, damnation and redemption, persisted, leaving an indelible mark on the cosmic narrative that unfolded across the celestial realms and the mortal plane alike. Chapter 5 of the Story of Lucifer Literary and Cultural Interpretations In the grand symphony of human creativity, Lucifer emerges as a recurring note, resonating through the ages. His story, originating in religious texts, transcends its theological roots to become a multifaceted archetype, a symbol of rebellion, enlightenment, and the complexities of human nature. As we embark on an extensive exploration of Lucifer's literary and cultural interpretations, we traverse diverse landscapes of thought, from the hallowed halls of classic literature to the vibrant tapestry of contemporary pop culture. The 17th century masterpiece Paradise Lost by John Milton remains a bedrock of Luciferian reinterpretation. Milton, in crafting his magnum opus, weaves an epic narrative that elevates Lucifer to the status of a tragic hero. The poem delves into the psychological depths of the fallen angel, exploring the intricacies of his rebellion and the profound consequences of diffing divine authority. Milton's Lucifer is not a mere antagonist, but a complex character whose motivations, doubts, and defiance create a symphony of moral ambiguity. The poet's portrayal of Lucifer as a charismatic rebel challenges conventional notions of good and evil, laying the groundwork for future literary explorations that would delve into the shades of grey within this celestial drama. The Romantic era, with its celebration of individualism and disdain for societal constraints, found a kindred spirit in the Luciferian archetype. Lord Byron, a prominent figure of the Romantic movement, gave rise to the Byronic hero, a charismatic, melancholic figure often embodying traits reminiscent of Milton's Lucifer. These brooding protagonists, such as Heathcliff in Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, 
drew inspiration from the fallen angel's defiance. Shelley's Prometheus Unbound serves as another hallmark of this romantic fascination with rebellion. The character of Prometheus, akin to Lucifer in his defiance against divine order, reflects the broader cultural exploration of autonomy, individualism, and the pursuit of knowledge during the Romantic era. The Faustian legend, rooted in Germanic folklore, interweaves seamlessly with the Luciferian narrative. The story of Faust, a scholar who makes a pact with the devil in exchange for knowledge and worldly pleasures, mirrors Lucifer's role as a tempter. Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus and Goethe's Faust delve into the consequences of such infernal bargains, exploring themes of ambition, desire, and the human condition. The motif of tempting pacts extends beyond European literature. In Latin American literature, Jorge Luis Borges, the LF, explores a mystical point in space that grants infinite knowledge, a narrative echo of Lucifer's temptation, drawing connections across cultural and geographical boundaries. The 20th and 21st centuries witnessed a proliferation of modern retellings and adaptations that breathe new life into the Luciferian narrative. Neil Gaiman's graphic novel series, The Sandman, introduces a nuanced Lucifer who rejects his role as ruler of hell, embarking on a journey of self-discovery. This reinterpretation not only challenges traditional depictions of Lucifer, but also explores themes of identity, autonomy, and existential introspection. Television series like Lucifer, inspired by characters from Neil Gaiman's work, further explore the multifaceted nature of the fallen angel. In this iteration, Lucifer navigates the complexities of morality and redemption, adding layers of depth to the narrative. The adaptation showcases the malleability of the Luciferian archetype, resonating with contemporary audiences while maintaining its timeless allure. Television series like Lucifer, inspired by characters from Neil Gaiman's work, further explore the multifaceted nature of the fallen angel. In this iteration, Lucifer navigates the complexities of morality and redemption, adding layers of depth to the narrative. The adaptation showcases the malleability of the Luciferian archetype, resonating with contemporary audiences while maintaining its timeless allure. The Luciferian archetype extends beyond Western literary traditions to find resonance in global mythologies. In Hindu mythology, the story of Shiva and the demon Jalandhara mirrors Lucifer's rebellion, exploring themes of defiance against divine authority and the consequences of unchecked ambition. This cross-cultural parallel highlights the universality of the Luciferian narrative, demonstrating its ability to transcend cultural boundaries. In Chinese mythology, the tale of the monkey king, Sun Wukong, exhibits resemblances to the Luciferian archetype. Sun Wukong's rebellion against celestial order and his quest for immortality align with the themes of autonomy and defiance found in Lucifer's story. These cross-cultural connections underscore the enduring relevance of the fallen angel in the broader human narrative. Lucifer's influence extends beyond literature to permeate popular culture in various forms. In music, artists have drawn inspiration from the Luciferian narrative to explore them as a rebellion, identity, and the eternal struggle between light and darkness. David Bowie, with his alter ego Ziggy Stardust, embodies elements of the Luciferian rebel, challenging societal norms and exploring the boundaries of self-expression. Songs like The Rolling Stones, Sympathy for the Devil, and Bob Dylan's Man of Constant Sorrow further illustrate the enduring fascination with the fallen angel across musical genres. The malleability of the Luciferian archetype allows artists to infuse their works with layers of meaning, contributing to an ongoing cultural dialogue. Philosophers and existentialists have grappled with the Luciferian themes of free will, autonomy, and the human condition. Friedrich Nietzsche's concept of the Übermensch the transcendent individual who creates their own values aligns with the rebellious spirit embodied by Lucifer. Existentialist thinkers like Jean-Paul Sartre explore the tension between individual freedom and societal constraints, echoing themes inherent in the Luciferian narrative. Lucifer becomes a philosophical symbol, 
representing the eternal struggle for self-determination and the relentless pursuit of personal truth. The figure of Lucifer serves as a philosophical catalyst, challenging preconceived notions of morality, authority, and the nature of existence. In this realm of thought, the fallen angel transcends religious connotations to become a timeless metaphor for the human quest for meaning and authenticity. In feminist literature and discourse, the Luciferian narrative undergoes critical reinterpretation, challenging traditional gender dynamics and addressing issues of agency, autonomy, and liberation. The temptation of Eve and the subsequent blame placed on women in religious narratives are deconstructed through feminist lenses. Writers like Angela Carter, in works such as The Bloody Chamber, reframe the Luciferian archetype to empower female characters, reclaiming narrative agency, and exploring themes of freedom and liberation. The feminist reinterpretation of the Luciferian narrative prompts critical examination of gender roles, autonomy, and the intersectionality of power. The fallen angel becomes a catalyst for conversations about agency, rebellion, and the reclaiming of narrative within feminist frameworks, further expanding the multifaceted nature of Lucifer's cultural impact. The Luciferian narrative intersects with LGBTQ representation, where the fallen angel symbolizes themes of otherness, identity, and the quest for acceptance. LGBTQ authors and creators incorporate the Luciferian archetype into narratives that explore issues of self-discovery, societal expectations, and the pursuit of authentic identity. The reinterpretation of Lucifer as a figure who transcends traditional binaries and challenges normative structures resonates with LGBTQ plus audiences. The fallen angel becomes a symbol of resilience, defiance, and the ongoing struggle for acceptance and equality, reflecting the adaptability of the Luciferian narrative to diverse cultural and social contexts. As we conclude our extensive exploration of Lucifer's literary and cultural interpretations, the richness of this archetype becomes increasingly apparent. Lucifer, far from being a static or antiquated figure, continues to evolve within the ongoing dialogue of human creativity. From Milton's grand epic to contemporary television series, from philosophical treatises to feminist and LGBTQ reinterpretations, Lucifer persists as a symbol that resonates with the ever-changing currents of human thought and expression. In the ongoing dialogue surrounding Lucifer, the fallen angel remains a mirror reflecting humanity's perennial questions about autonomy, morality, and the pursuit of meaning. As authors, artists, philosophers, and creators continue to contribute to this rich tapestry of interpretation, Lucifer transcends his biblical origins to become a symbol that resonates with the ever-changing currents of human thought and expression. In the vast expanse of literary and cultural interpretations, Lucifer emerges not as a static, archaic figure confined to religious texts, but as an eternal archetype, a symbol that adapts, evolves, and persists in the collective imagination. The fallen angel embodies the perennial human quest for self-determination, autonomy, and the exploration of the boundaries between light and darkness. As the eternal Lucifer continues to weave his story through the fabric of human creativity, the ongoing interpretations invite us to grapple with timeless questions. What does it mean to rebel? How do we navigate the tension between individual freedom and societal expectations? And, ultimately, what is the nature of our own cosmic narratives in the grand tapestry of existence? The Luciferian archetype, an ever-present companion in the journey of human expression, prompts us to reflect on the perennial themes that define our collective exploration of the human experience. Chapter 6 of the Story of Lucifer Cultural and Artistic Depictions In the vast tapestry of human expression, Lucifer emerges as a captivating muse, inspiring artists, writers, musicians, and creators across centuries. The story of the Morning Star's fall from grace serves as a rich wellspring of creativity, inviting exploration, interpretation, and reinterpretation. As we venture into the heart of cultural and artistic depictions of Lucifer, we illuminate the luminous canvas upon which this enigmatic figure has been painted, sculpted, 
sung, and performed. The visual arts, with their power to transcend language and convey complex narratives through images, have long been a fertile ground for the depiction of Lucifer. From medieval illuminated manuscripts to Renaissance masterpieces, artists have grappled with the challenge of capturing the divine duality inherent in the fallen angel. Medieval Illuminations In medieval Christian manuscripts, Lucifer was often depicted as a radiant angel cast into the depths of darkness. Illuminated pages illustrated the celestial rebellion, portraying the once glorious figure in states of both celestial beauty and infernal torment, Renaissance mastery. The Renaissance, marked by a revival of classical aesthetics, saw artists like Michelangelo and Gustave Doré portraying Lucifer in works of breathtaking complexity. Michelangelo's The Fall of the Rebel Angels on the Sistine Chapel ceiling captures the celestial chaos of rebellion, while Doré's illustrations for Dante's Inferno plunge Lucifer into the abyss with stunning detail. Lucifer's story has been a wellspring of symbolism and allegory in literature, offering writers a potent metaphor to explore themes of rebellion, knowledge, and the human condition. Goethe's Faust, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's Faust weaves Luciferian themes into the narrative, using Mephistopheles as a tempter akin to the fallen angel. Faust's pursuit of knowledge and experience mirrors Lucifer's quest for autonomy, and the pact made with Mephistopheles delves into the consequences of unchecked ambition. Milton's Legacy, John Milton's Paradise Lost, not only influenced visual artists, but also became a seminal work in literature. The epic poem's exploration of Lucifer's rebellion and the complexities of free will laid the groundwork for the romantic poets and subsequent generations to delve into the nuances of the fallen angel's character. The harmonies of rebellion find resonance in the world of music, where composers and musicians have crafted sonic landscapes that evoke the essence of Lucifer's defiance. Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring Igor Stravinsky's groundbreaking ballet, The Rite of Spring, is infused with primal energy and dissonant harmonies that echo the tumultuous spirit of rebellion. While not a direct depiction of Lucifer, the composition's avant-garde nature aligns with the themes of upheaval and defiance associated with the fallen angel. Rolling Stone's Sympathy for the Devil the Rolling Stones' iconic song captures the essence of Lucifer as a tempter and antagonist. The lyrics, narrated from the devil's perspective, explore historical events and the human capacity for cruelty, framing Lucifer as a witness to humanity's darker impulses. The stage and screen provide dynamic platforms for the dramatic exploration of Lucifer's character, allowing actors and directors to breathe life into the fallen angel. Mephistopheles in Dr. Faustus Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus has been adapted for the stage numerous times, with Mephistopheles often taking center stage as the embodiment of Lucifer's temptations. The character's dynamic presence and Machiavellian cunning make Mephistopheles a compelling figure in the theatrical realm. Lucifer TV series, the television series, Lucifer, inspired by characters from Neil Gaiman's graphic novels, reimagines Lucifer Morningstar as a charismatic and complex character. Tom Ellis's portrayal of Lucifer as a nightclub owner turned consultant for the LAPD adds a modern twist to the age-old narrative, exploring themes of redemption, identity, and the blurred lines between good and evil. Dance, with its emphasis on movement and expression, becomes a unique medium for interpreting the ethereal qualities of Lucifer's character. Ballet and the Celestial Rebellion Ballet, with its ability to convey narrative through movement, has explored the theme of celestial rebellion in works like La Bayadere. Choreographers use dance to embody the struggle between light and darkness, creating visual poetry that mirrors the cosmic drama of Lucifer's fall. Contemporary Dance Explorations In the realm of contemporary dance, Choreographers have drawn inspiration from the Luciferian narrative to explore themes of individuality, rebellion, and transformation. The fluidity of movement becomes a metaphor for the ever-shifting nature of Lucifer's character. 
the world of fashion becomes a captivating canvas for the visual representation of Lucifer, with designers drawing on the symbolism associated with the fallen angel. Symbolic imagery. Lucifer's symbolism, often associated with serpents, forbidden knowledge, and celestial beauty, finds its way into fashion. Designers incorporate these elements into garments, creating wearable art that captures the essence of rebellion and self-discovery. Cultural icons. Pop culture icons, from fashion models to musicians, have embraced Luciferian imagery, using it as a form of expression and empowerment. The incorporation of devilish motifs challenges traditional notions of morality and beauty, fostering a dialogue around individuality and self-expression. Video games, as an interactive medium, allow players to immerse themselves in worlds that explore the nuances of Luciferian themes. Dante's Inferno The video game adaptation of Dante Alighieri's Inferno takes players on a journey through the nine circles of hell, encountering Lucifer as the ultimate antagonist. The game's immersive experience allows players to navigate the consequences of sin and rebellion in a visually stunning digital landscape. Bayonetta The character of Bayonetta, a witch with infernal powers, embodies elements of the Luciferian archetype. The game's narrative and aesthetic draw inspiration from religious imagery, blending celestial and infernal motifs to create a visually striking and thematically rich experience. Contemporary art movements embrace the enigmatic allure of Lucifer, offering a platform for artists to explore the complexities of the fallen angel, surrealism, and the subconscious. Surrealist artists such as Salvador Dali tapped into the subconscious to create dreamlike depictions of celestial realms and infernal landscapes. These surreal interpretations evoke the otherworldly essence of Lucifer's story, street art and social commentary. Street artists infuse the urban landscape with Luciferian symbolism as a form of social commentary. Graffiti and murals become a canvas for exploring themes of rebellion, autonomy, and the consequences of societal norms. Cultural festivals and celebrations, rooted in tradition and symbolism, incorporate Luciferian themes in various forms of expression. Carnivals and masquerades, carnival celebrations with their masks and costumes, provide an opportunity for revelers to embody the duality of Lucifer's character. The playful exploration of light and dark becomes a metaphor for the human experience. Literary and arts festivals, events that celebrate literature and the arts often feature discussions, performances, and exhibitions inspired by Luciferian themes. These festivals become spaces for artists and intellectuals to engage with the timeless narrative of the fallen angel. Let me recap the story for you. In the vast annals of human storytelling, few narratives have achieved the level of intrigue, complexity, and enduring fascination as the tale of Lucifer. This ancient saga, rooted in biblical and mythological traditions, transcends religious confines, weaving through literature, art, and culture across epochs. Join us as we embark on an immersive journey through the most pivotal chapters of this enigmatic cosmic epic. The cosmic drama unfolds in the celestial realm, a realm of divine order disrupted by the radiant figure of Lucifer. While the biblical texts do not explicitly detail the celestial rebellion, passages like Isaiah 14, 12, 15 and Ezekiel 28, 12, 19 provide glimpses into the grandeur of this celestial defiance. Lucifer, once a radiant angel, becomes the harbinger of autonomy, questioning the established cosmic order and embodying the timeless aspirations of human self-determination. The aftermath of Lucifer's celestial rebellion marks a transformative chapter, the fall from grace. Isaiah 14, 12, 15 vividly describes the expulsion of the morning star from the celestial realm, a descent that echoes through the corridors of eternity. This chapter serves as a turning point, shaping Lucifer into the archetype of the fallen angel and setting the stage for the unfolding cosmic drama. Lucifer's influence extends beyond celestial realms into the earthly domain, where he is often identified with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. In the biblical narrative of Genesis 3, Lucifer tempts Adam and Eve, introducing sin into the human experience 
and leading to their expulsion from paradise. This chapter delves into the consequences of temptation and explores the intricate dynamics between humanity and the fallen angel. Biblical passages such as Revelation 12, 5, 7, 9 and Revelation 20, 10 cast the cosmic consequences of Lucifer's rebellion into stark relief. The ultimate fate of Lucifer, now identified as Satan, unfolds as he and his followers are cast into the lake of fire, a culmination of celestial judgment. This chapter explores the broader implications of cosmic disobedience and the enduring consequences of defiance against divine authority. The story of Lucifer finds new life and depth in literature, with John Milton's epic poem Paradise Lost standing as a cornerstone of literary interpretation. Milton masterfully delves into the rebellion in heaven, the fall from grace, and Lucifer's pivotal role in tempting humanity. This chapter not only explores Milton's influence but also examines how literary interpretations shape cultural perceptions, contributing to the enduring fascination with Lucifer across the ages. The visual representation of Lucifer spans centuries and continents, from medieval illuminated manuscripts to contemporary adaptations. This chapter delves into the rich tapestry of artistic depictions, tracing the evolution of Lucifer's image. Artists grapple with the challenge of capturing the essence of this complex figure, exploring the interplay between light and darkness in visual form. Lucifer's influence transcends traditional art forms, extending into ballet, contemporary dance, fashion, video games, and contemporary art movements. This chapter explores the multifaceted ways in which Lucifer is interpreted and represented in the cultural landscape. From the graceful movements of dancers to the avant-garde expressions of contemporary artists, Lucifer becomes a symbol that resonates with the ever-evolving zeitgeist of society. As we navigate through contemporary times, the story of Lucifer has not only persisted, but has undergone a modern alchemy. This chapter explores how Lucifer has become a prominent figure in popular culture, from television series to music. The character takes on new dimensions, challenging traditional narratives and inviting fresh interpretations in the context of our rapidly changing cultural landscape. Beyond the narrative and visual interpretations, Lucifer becomes a philosophical archetype, prompting profound reflections on existential themes. This chapter delves into the philosophical dimensions of Lucifer, exploring how the figure embodies concepts of individualism, rebellion, and the perpetual quest for meaning in a universe defined by moral ambiguity. In the digital age, the mythos of Lucifer continues to expand. This chapter explores how digital media, including online forums, social media, and interactive storytelling, contribute to the ongoing narrative of Lucifer. The character becomes a lens through which modern audiences explore themes of identity, morality, and the complexities of the human psyche. As we conclude our odyssey through the multifaceted chapters of Lucifer's story, we find ourselves at the nexus of myth and reality. The tale of Lucifer, far from a static narrative, is an ever-evolving symphony that resonates through the corridors of human creativity and contemplation. From celestial rebellion to modern cultural interpretations, Lucifer's story invites us to reflect on the timeless questions that define our existence. In this unending odyssey, Lucifer remains a prism through which we refract our understanding of autonomy, rebellion, and the eternal dance between light and darkness. As we navigate the uncharted realms of myth and reality, may the story of Lucifer continue to inspire exploration, challenge preconceptions, and spark conversations that illuminate the boundless dimensions of the human experience. The saga endures, an invitation to delve deeper, question further, and embark on an unending odyssey of discovery. As we conclude this extraordinary odyssey through the cosmic realms and the intricate tapestry of Lucifer's story, we find ourselves standing at the crossroads of myth and meaning. The tale of the morning star, from celestial rebellion to infernal damnation, has not merely unfolded before us. It has invited us to embark on a journey of contemplation, 
that lingers in the corridors of eternity. From the celestial heights of heaven's defiance to the haunting depths of hell's damnation, the story of Lucifer serves as a mirror reflecting the complexities of the human experience. It challenges us to explore the nuances of rebellion, autonomy, and the perennial dance between light and darkness, a dance that reverberates through the annals of time. As we've delved into literary interpretations, artistic depictions, and cultural echoes, we've witnessed the transformation of Lucifer from a biblical figure to a symbol that transcends religious confines. In the hands of poets, painters, and storytellers, Lucifer has become a prism through which we refract our own questions about morality, free will, and the pursuit of meaning. Before we part ways, let us linger a moment in this intersection of myth and reality, a liminal space where the story of Lucifer converges with our own narratives. Consider this not merely a conclusion, but a pause in the eternal narrative, an invitation to reflect on the echoes of Lucifer's tale that resonate within us. If you found resonance in this exploration, don't merely subscribe, join our community. Become a fellow seeker of the extraordinary as we continue to unravel the mysteries that shape our understanding of the cosmos. Let the story of Lucifer be a catalyst for conversations, reflections, and further explorations. As we navigate the vast realms of myth and reality, let the echoes of Lucifer's tale linger in your thoughts like stardust scattered across the cosmic canvas. Until our paths cross again in the realms of discovery, I bid you a heartfelt farewell. May your journey be as enigmatic and illuminating as the story we've explored together.